Magnets, why has China's rare earth export restriction had such a significant impact? Why is the automotive industry so dependent on Chinese magnets? Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of a major event that sent shockwaves through the global economic landscape. This past April, China implemented export restrictions on heavy rare earths and permanent magnets. This move was like a boulder dropped into the global industrial pond, with the ripples hitting the European automotive industry first and hardest. A Ford factory in Cologne, Germany was forced to halt production, and the French Automotive Supplier Association went into crisis management. This is more than just a simple trade restriction. It reveals a deep-seated dependence within the global supply chain and complex geopolitical maneuvering. After the news broke, shares in automotive-related industries worldwide fluctuated wildly, and the market value of several European car companies instantly evaporated by billions of euros. The impact is extremely rare in recent global trade disputes. In this video, I'll take you through the layers of mystery behind this event. In the main body, we'll delve into the background of China's rare earth export controls, explore why the European automotive industry is so dependent on Chinese magnets, and examine how other countries are responding to similar situations. I'm confident that after watching, you'll have a brand new understanding of the global industrial landscape. China's Rare Earth Export Controls, a compliance-driven and far-reaching move. This April, China announced it would be implementing export controls on seven types of medium and heavy rare earth elements, including samarium, gadolinium, terbium, dysprosium, lutetium, scandium, and yttrium. This action wasn't a whim. It was based on solid reasoning. Looking at international norms, rare earth materials have dual-use applications for both military and civilian purposes. Implementing export controls is standard practice for countries to protect national security and fulfill international obligations. As a key global supplier of critical minerals, China has always actively fulfilled its international responsibilities. The new export control regulations are in proactive alignment with these international standards. For a long time, China's rare earth industry has faced challenges from extensive development, including excessive resource extraction and severe environmental damage. At the same time, exporting these valuable resources at cabbage prices has led to their massive loss. The introduction of the 2024 rare earth management regulations marked a new legal phase for rare earth governance in China and these export controls are a key measure to promote the sustainable development of the rare earth industry. China isn't aiming to ban rare earth exports but rather to standardize them and facilitate compliant trade. This is intended to maintain the stability of the global supply chain while safeguarding national security. China's decision to control rare earth exports is entirely based on its own industrial development needs and international responsibilities making it a legitimate action in line with international rules. In the past, Western countries have also implemented export controls on various strategically important materials, such as the U.S. restrictions on high-tech military products and Europe's controls on certain key technologies. However, some Western media outlets have misinterpreted China's legitimate rare earth export controls. This actually reveals their anxiety about their own dependence on China within the rare earth supply chain. Analysis China's rare earth export controls are a reflection of its own industrial upgrading and its fulfillment of international responsibilities. Western countries should view this objectively instead of making groundless accusations. The global supply chain is inherently interdependent. China's actions are not targeting specific countries but are for the healthy development of the entire industry. The fundamental solution for the West is to adjust their own industrial structures, improve resource utilization efficiency, and reduce their excessive dependence on a single source of supply, rather than simply complaining. European Automotive Industry – Deep Dependence – Huge Impact The European automotive industry's dependence on Chinese rare earths and permanent magnets is more significant than you might imagine. China supplies about 99% of the 17 rare earth elements to the EU and approximately 98% of its rare earth permanent magnets. In modern car manufacturing, especially for new energy vehicles, rare earth permanent magnets are widely used in critical components like electric motors and batteries. 
the Ford factory in Cologne, Germany, being forced to stop production due to a lack of sufficient rare earth permanent magnets is not an isolated incident. Benjamin Krieger, Secretary General of the European Association of Automotive Suppliers, CLEPA, has stated that China's export restrictions have already led to production stoppages for European suppliers, with more to come in the future. Data shows that since April, the supply of magnets to Western companies has drastically decreased, causing a major shock to global car manufacturers. Several European parts factories and production lines have been shut down due to material shortages. This has not only affected the normal operations of car manufacturers but also created a domino effect throughout the upstream and downstream supply chains. Many workers face the risk of unemployment, and related supporting businesses are also facing operational difficulties. The European automotive industry has long been a global leader, but its excessive dependence on China for critical raw materials has been exposed in this event. Analysis while the European automotive industry benefited from China's rare earths, it overlooked supply chain risks. An over-reliance on a single supplier makes the industry extremely vulnerable to supply fluctuations. European car manufacturers should use this opportunity to reevaluate their supply chain configurations, invest more in diversifying their raw material sources, and improve their technology to reduce their dependence on critical raw materials like rare earths. Otherwise, similar supply shocks will continue to cause significant damage to their industry in the future. Other countries' strategies, varied approaches, mixed results. The United States is also highly dependent on China for its rare earth supply. The U.S. has only one rare earth mine and imports most of its rare earths from China. In response to China's rare earth export controls, the U.S. government is trying to promote the development of its domestic rare earth mining and processing industry. It's also seeking more rare earth resources by signing mineral agreements with countries like Ukraine. However, these efforts are progressing slowly and are unlikely to reduce its dependence on China in the short term. Mark Smith, CEO of the American mineral extraction company Neo Performance Materials, has admitted that building an alternative supply chain takes time. Japan has responded to the rare earth supply issue by diversifying its supply channels and increasing resource recovery and recycling rates. Japanese companies are actively searching for rare earth resources globally while investing more in research and development for rare earth recycling technologies from used electronic products. After years of effort, Japan has reduced its dependence on Chinese rare earths to a certain extent. However, Due to the indispensability of rare earths in high-end manufacturing, Japan still cannot completely escape its reliance on external rare earth supplies in some critical fields. Analysis Both the United States and Japan have made efforts to address the rare earth supply issue, but with different results. The U.S. strategy relies more on acquiring external resources and is progressing slowly, reflecting the difficulties in its industrial restructuring. Japan's focus on diversification and resource recycling is a good model. In the global competition for resources, countries should develop sensible resource strategies based on their own circumstances, improve their resource security capabilities, and strengthen technological innovation to reduce their dependence on key resources. Only then can they maintain industrial competitiveness in a complex international economic environment. This incident, where the Chinese magnet shortage impacted European car production lines shows that the global supply chain is highly interdependent. A change in any one link can trigger a chain reaction. Although China's rare earth export controls have impacted the industries of some countries, these are reasonable actions based on China's own development and international responsibilities. Other countries should use this as an opportunity to reflect on the shortcomings of their own industrial structures and supply chain layouts, strengthen international cooperation, and jointly promote the sustainable development of global industries. I hope you will continue to pay attention to major events like this that affect the global economic landscape, and together we can witness the progress of global industries amidst change. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.